Hey everybody, this is 1.4 measuring angles. Feel free to try to do now on your own, pause the video and resume it when you're ready to check your answers. Okay. All right, the do now asks you to write T for true and F for false. It says number one, AB names a ray with endpoints A and B. Well, it should be an arrow like that. A. B. So here's ray AB, or here's a, a drawing of ray AB. Now, the key word that they're focusing in on is endpoint, okay? Although A is an endpoint, B is not, and the reason being is because we have this arrow here which shows that this line, or this ray, excuse me, will go on forever and ever and ever and ever in this direction. Okay, so therefore, this is false. Okay. You name a ray by its endpoint and another point on the ray. Well, if you take a look, we, ra we name the ray above here ray AB because of its endpoint and another point on the line. This is true. All right, two definitions here. You have the angle and the vertex. An angle is, an angle is formed by two rays with the same endpoint. And if you notice, here is the symbol for an angle. All right, so feel free to pause, get that definition in there, and we'll keep moving. The vertex, if you notice, I uh, color coordinated this in orange. If you look at your picture here, the turning point of an angle or the corner okay so here's your turning point a is your vertex in this image below so how can I name this angle well there's a few different ways that I can name this angle the first is by its vertex okay so I can call this simply angle a okay the second is by a point a vertex and another point. So we can call this angle B A C. Or you could call it angle C A B. Okay, it doesn't matter which side you start at. Just make sure you call it in order. A point, then the vertex, then another point. Third, sometimes they actually give us a designation, and that would be a number. If you notice here, they gave a purple little number one. So in that case, we could just call this angle, angle one. Okay, so it says, what rays form angle one? Well, here's angle one, and the rays that I see are ray MJ and the other ray I see is MK. What are two other names for angle one? Well, like we said on the last page, you can call a ray or an angle by its vertex, so we can call it angle M. We can call an angle by a point, a vertex, and a point. So J, M, K. Where you do the reverse of that, angle K, M, J. Okay. What rays form angle two? Well, again, it's vert angle M. So we're gonna run into an issue here. How can we call both of these angle M? There lies the problem, okay? There's a reason that these questions ask for two other names. Okay, and I'm getting ahead of myself. The reason they ask for two other names is that we cannot use angle M because we're unsure of which angle or which angle we're talking about. This one or this one. So sometimes we can't use the vertex and we need to be a little more specific. Okay, so no angle M for these. We're not allowed to use that. Okay, if you look on the right, we can call this one angle KML. 
or the reverse of that, angle L, M, K. Now it says what rays, I skipped over this question, form angle two? Well, that's ray M, K and ray M, L. Okay, one way to measure the size of angles is in degrees. If you notice, this angle here is 62 degrees. To indicate the measure of an angle, you write a lowercase m in front of the angle symbol. So the measurement of angle A is equal to, and if you look on the right, 62 degrees. More postulates. Postulate 1-7 is the protractor postulate. It says consider OB, and if you look, OB is down here, ray OB. And a point A on one side of OB. Well, here's your point, right? Every ray of the form OA, meaning right here, this ray, can be paired one to one with a real number from zero to 180 degrees, okay? So if you notice, if you look at this angle, we started at zero degrees, and this angle actually extends all the way to right here in between 130 and 120. So that would be at 125 degrees. We're gonna do a lot of practice with protractors. If you have one at home, that's great. If not, I'll use the digital one within here uh, in the upcoming lessons. You can also classify angles according to their measure. So they fall into separate categories based on uh, the measurement of their degrees. The first tile would be acute, okay? Easy way to remember, acute, right? Being something small, right? So if you notice, acute angles are smaller. X is greater than zero, but less than 90 degrees. So any angle in between zero and 90 degrees is considered acute. The next one, and the most easiest to spot out, okay, is when there is a box in the corner, okay, designation. And it looks like you have half of a square here, right, or just an L. That would be a right angle. Every right angle is 90 degrees. X equals 90, okay? Then you have ones that extend past 90 degrees, and those are called obtuse. Those are your larger angles. X is in between 90 and 180 degrees. And your last one, if you notice, this doesn't look like an angle at all. It just looks like a flat line. Well, that's a straight angle, and they equal, whoa, typo there. They equal 180 degrees. Okay. Measuring and classifying angles. What are the measures of LKN, JKL, and JKN? Well, the measure of angle LKN, LKN, if you notice, you start at zero degrees, and this extends all the way in between 150, uh, 140 and 150. So right in between 140 and 150 is 145. Since it's 145 degrees, that would fall into our obtuse category. Okay. The measure of angle JKL, JK, whoops. JKL. Now, if you notice, we're not starting at zero this time, okay? We're starting right here, which is at 35, and we're finishing at 90. So in order to find this, the dif distance between 90 and 35, 90 minus 35, it's 55 degrees. The angle type, if it's 55 degrees, well, that would be in between zero and 90. It is acute.
the measure of angle J K N J K N well that starts at 0 and it finishes at 90 so that's a 90 degree angle and all 90 degree angles are called right angles congruent angles there's that word again angles with the same measure right congruent always means the same so if you notice you have angle a and angle b and they're both designated as 54 degrees so that means the measure of angle a is congruent to the measure of angle b we can mark all angles with arcs to show that they are congruent each set of congruent angles should have the same number of arcs and what do we mean by an arc well if angle a and angle b are congruent there's an one arc for angle a which means b should also have one arc but say we're dealing with larger images and multiple angles and there's different pairs of angles that are congruent, well, as long as we keep them the same, we're allowed to use two and two, or three and three, or four and four, as long as they're the same to show that they're congruent. All right, your exit slip says provide four names for the given angle. All right, and then on the bottom, they ask you to identify the following angles as acute, right obtuse or straight okay i look forward to seeing those responses when you submit your work thank you for watching